Hello students, for this topic, we'll be doing infrared IR spectroscopy under analytical techniques. Again, reference is organic chemistry with biological applications by John E. McMurray, chapter 10 and 11. We know that the term is spectroscopy, as we mentioned earlier on. For spectroscopy, it is a non-destructive technique. So a molecule will absorb energy, and if it reaches that particular fixed value, then the energy state of the molecule become promoted to a excited state. So for IR, infrared, what we are talking about here is the energy absorbed to vibrate the molecule. But which part of the molecule are we vibrating? The bonds, because you think of bonds like springs, they can stretch, right? Stretch and bend towards each other. So this is what we call vibrational mode. Atoms, they have mass. The spheres containing your protons and neutrons, right? And they are connected by covalent bonds. So think of them like springs, you see, that can move about between the two spheres. And as we know, under spectroscopy, only specific vibration energy are allowed. And that depends on the functional group present, maybe an ester, CO double bond, ether, CO single bond, amide, CO double bond with a CN single bond in between them. And these energy correspond to wave number of 4,000 to 400 inverse centimeters. Now, why do we say from 4,000 to 400? Why do we start from higher to lower? Because we know that CM inverse is uh, actually proportional to the frequency and energy of the molecule. So when atoms move, they vibrate, and hence we get the energy converted into wave number. Now, in this part here, recall, we have the red ball here as a radiation source, and if you give some energy, what happened? Let's see. Only the blue color radiation that correspond to the energy gap that's quantized, right? We promote this energy level from the ground state to high energy state. So you have seen it before elsewhere, but I just like to remind you that for infrared, we are talking about the vibrational mode. So what are the kinds of vibrations we experience in the molecule? Now let's take a look at CH2 group here. So in general, for IR spectroscopy vibrational modes, there's many two kinds. One is stretching, bond stretching, the other one is bending. So in the following clip, I'll be demonstrating to you myself physically on what these are. So now you know that there are two main kinds of vibrational modes in IR spectroscopy. Number one, stretching. Number two, bending. So for stretching, there are two kinds. One is symmetrical stretch. As you know, when we exercise, we need to stretch. Now stretch after the exercise. Symmetrical stretch means this way. Do you see a line of symmetry on my skull, through my skull to the body? One line of symmetry as I stretch. My arms are the bonds. Asymmetrical stretch, this way. No line of symmetry through my body. Next, we have bending. Bending consists of four kinds. Scissoring, rocking, wagging, and twisting. So for scissoring, the bonds here, remember my arms are the bonds, it works like a pair of scissors. Scissors. Scissoring. For rocking, like how you rock. Rocking. And wagging. Wag. Lastly, twisting. Twisting. So remember, two main kinds of vibrational modes in our spectroscopy, stretching and bending. Once we pump this energy, the energy will, will be absorbed if this frequency of the radiation matches the frequency of the vibration. So from the IR spectra that we can see later on, we can understand why the molecular motions that's occurring in the molecule by this infrared energy and hence we can deduce what are the functional groups. In IR spectroscopy, it comes from the vibrational change, right? So we mentioned just now what is a stretching and bending. Maybe here in this animation, you get a better picture. You see here, one stretching, the balls are moving uh, away towards each other and we can do a bond bending as well. See, bending like that, okay? Bend towards each other. 
it's very important that not all vibrations there's a stretching you can detect it by infrared because what if you have two balls that's identical with the same mass same atomic size same number of protons like we're talking about nitrogen and then triple bond OO double bond and bromine bromine single bond see they stretch oxygen stretch nitrogen stretch but for these molecules you do not see any peak in the spectrum and the reason why why not right it is because for each of them when they stretch right at any point of time there's always a symmetry line so there's no net dipole moment there's no change in the polarity in the dipole moment in the molecule at any given time that's why there won't be any signal so once again you see during the stretching motion for all of them you see there's always a symmetry line in between them do you notice that symmetry line symmetry line and here symmetry line all the time okay on the other hand for diatomic molecules as like CO triple bond and IBR okay because it is never symmetrical so during the stretch you see I can't draw any symmetry line this way I mean true here of course definitely for these molecules but not this way so there will be a dipole moment towards one side and hence you can detect the peaks in the IR spectrum now CO2 carbon dioxide we will use this to demonstrate the stretching two modes one is a symmetrical stretch one is the asymmetrical stretch so we see from here that here for the symmetrical stretch again there's always a symmetry line so we cannot see this signal inside the IR spectrum but for the asymmetrical stretch you see I can't draw this line vertically you know without cutting through the atom so there's no symmetry line that means there's a change in the double moment and hence we can see the symmetric asymmetrical stretching in the spectra so you know the answer to the question which of these above stretching cause the absorption of infrared radiation the answer must be hint consider the polarity of each CO double bond that's right it must be the asymmetrical stretching take a look okay now so CO2 has another form of vibrational mode the bending don't forget the bending the bonds squeeze together so will this give rise to an infrared spectrum take a look how it stretch certainly because there's a change in the dipole moment in the molecule now for this molecule here called the acetate ion so this contains a, a non-linear CO2 group okay not linear but branched branched towards the end so again we have got two kinds of stretching let's see asymmetrical stretching symmetrical stretching now which of these for the acetic ions are infrared active is it both let's give it a try it is wow why because you see in both cases there's always a change in the dipole moment